What's up guys? Today I'm doing a QA and and I actually haven't done a QA and a in a very very long time. I think it's over long overdue for another one and I wanted to do a makeup look. This makeup look actually right here. You guys have a lot of questions. Uh, I gathered the questions from your text and also my Instagram story. So thank you for sending them in. So today's video is in partnership with e.l.f. Cosmetics and I just want to a huge shout out to e.l.f. because their products are amazing, good quality and this is in collaboration with It Gets Better for Pride Month. So a little bit about me if you are new to my channel. Uh, my name is Ivan. My pronouns are he, him, or they, them. And I identify as a queer man. I think queer is just an umbrella term for anyone that doesn't really feel like they fit under the cis heteronormative category of, you know, gender or sexuality. I came out as non-binary last year during the pandemic because I was living alone and I just felt like, you know, the term man didn't really suit me. You know, when somebody calls me man, um, I don't really get offended because I think that's pretty na a natural response when they first see me. I also wanted to explain a little bit about gender identity and gender expression. Gender identity is how somebody identifies. For example, somebody identifying as a cis male or a gay male, cis woman. So that's how you feel on the inside, right? And then gender expression is uh, anything external. So how you speak, how you wear your hair, what clothes you wear, the makeup that you wear or don't. So those two are related but they are not the same. So for example, straight cis male can put on a dress and nail polish, but that doesn't mean they necessarily identify as you know a woman. They still identify as a straight cis male, but their expression might be different. Does that make sense? I hope that answers a lot of your questions. Non-binary is the easiest for me because the reason why I identify as non-binary is because it relieves a lot of pressure of wanting to fit into society's standards of what I should look like. But anyways, I'm gonna put on my contacts because I can't really see. Now that my skin is well moisturized and prepped, I'm going to go in with my base. I absolutely love this sponge. It's like a pointed teardrop shape, kind of like a teardrop shape, but it really gets into the inner corners. For base, I'm gonna go in with the e.l.f. Camo CC Cream. I absolutely love this. Uh, I don't really need a lot because it is full coverage. Uh, and also, it contains SPF 30, which is amazing. I always wear SPF underneath, but it's also nice to have a little bit more SPF coverage just for extra insurance. It contains collagen, peptides, and niacinamide. So a lot of skin-loving ingredients. It doesn't have any fragrance in it, and it comes in 20 shades. Just kind of dot it wherever I need to. I tap a little bit on the sponge, and I just kind of just blend it out. You can just see how much it covers. I am in the shade Light 240. All of e.l.f. Cosmetics products are also vegan and cruelty free. When you're exploring your sexuality, I feel like makeup is one way to kind of dabble in it. For me, it is especially, and I think makeup has a way of really affirming how you're feeling on the inside with external factors. Yeah, I, I remember going into Target or Walmart or wherever and just looking at makeup and I think e.l.f. Cosmetics was one of those that I was like, I really want to just try it. I think so many things in the world are gendered and you don't really realize that until you kind of step back and take a look at the world. Does it have to be gendered? Do shavers need to be pink or blue? I don't think so, but apparently, you know, some people do. Being non-binary is a way to look at the world through a more open lens to break down those views on binaries, and it's very freeing for me. And this just have a, has a really like beautiful and natural finish. Does must sexuality have a label? And are there times where you still question your sexuality? How do you know for certain? Um, I think sexuality. Um, itself is on a spectrum, like there's a continuum. Um, there's not really a person that is like 100%, I mean, they can say they are, right? But I truly believe that sexuality is fluid. Maybe not 
this kind of spectrum, but maybe more like a round spectrum and you can like be placed in any of it. Labels are important and not important. Labels are important when you are kind of looking for your tribe and looking for people you want to connect to and they're good signifiers of a certain group, right? So you can feel safe. But I think sometimes labels can be quite detrimental when you are exploring sexuality sometimes because I feel like you might put yourself in a box. For the longest time, I, I always just thought of myself as like a gay man. So I never even, because I already placed myself in that, I never really explored anything outside of it. I think labels are good starters and also labels are necessary for a lot of activist movements because it does give, it, give what we are talking about a language, like a tangible language. At the end of the day, I think truly what matters is how you see yourself and how you want to identify is what really, really matters. Are there times where I still question my sexuality? Um, I don't think so. I feel like I'm pretty fluid as a person. And so even if there are questions that arise in myself, like, oh, yeah, well, yeah, I think I do. When I look at people, um, when I look at very beautiful people or people that just make me go wow, yeah, sometimes I do question my sexuality. But do I dwell on it? I really don't think so because I let it just happen. And if I'm attracted to, to a person, then I'm attracted to a person. I don't really think of does this fit my, my idea of what I'm supposed to be attracted to as long as they're a consenting adult. I don't really, really mind. I'm gonna use this brightening concealer by Elf as well. So beautiful. Any tips for someone who is on the fence about their pronoun identity? He, him, to they, him. I would say I don't really have any tips for that. The idea of normalizing having pronouns is really, really great because it kind of shields some people from being harassed about their pronouns. So for example, if um, a non-binary person or a trans person is trying to solidify their pronouns and they're getting harassed, having cis people put their pronouns in their bio or wherever helps normalize that, like normalize asking for people's pronouns. Go with what is comfortable to you personally. Um, don't feel like you have to change your pronouns because um, people are telling you to don't feel like you have to rush. That's one thing I realized in my life that there is no finish line for figuring out your sexuality and your gender. Um, it's a lifelong discovery process. And don't feel bad if you're not at the place where you want to be. Because we all will get there as long as we're open to change and open to listening to ourselves more. I also have a question from Elf. When was the time that you felt truly seen as an LGBTQ person? When I truly feel seen is when I'm very well expressed, when I'm truly in my queerness or comfort and I don't feel judged by my friends or family. I think that's when I feel really, really seen doing videos and being my full self and you guys don't judge me for that. I think that makes me truly feel seen because I just feel like safe. That's when I feel seen. I, I, I like feeling like I can be who I want to be without any judgment and without people saying that I'm wrong. There's a lot of things that people can tell you that will make you feel wrong. Like you don't fit in with you know the popular kids or you don't fit in to the ideal beauty standards of society that can make you feel like you're wrong. These days, I gravitate to what I want to look like. The blushes that I'm going to use are from Alpha Cosmetics. They are the Putty Blush, and this is an extension from their Putty Primer uh, line. And these blushes are just so blendable and so beautiful. The first one is this color right here, and I'll put the shade name right there. It's gorgeous. I'm just gonna tap this. This is a pretty blush heavy look. That's a fun thing about makeup too, as um, you know, there there's really no rules, I think. There's certain tips and tricks you can take in if you want to 
you know, achieve this look and achieve that look. But all in all, it's kind of just, you know, makeup is pigment. It's fun. You can, it comes off at the end of the day and it's such a great way to, you know, express yourself. I gravitate to makeup is because I was always an artsy kid growing up. Like I love drawing and I play a lot of games. I play online games like Ragnarok Online. I play Maple Story and I used to draw the characters. And in a world of like such rigid like accomplishments, especially being Asian, I just felt like there's there's not much ways you can express yourself. And makeup was one way that I was like, oh, I really like this. Like it's like kind of like fun. It's like painting your face. I didn't think that it was such a political and gendered thing. Because when you grow up drawing stuff, you kind of have to put blush on characters, you have to draw their eyebrows. So to me, it was very like a natural thing. But I realized that when I put on more makeup and I posted it onto the internet, um, yeah, there was some people asking questions about like, are you a boy or a girl? Why are you putting on uh, makeup? You know, I didn't realize that, wow, this is actually kind of like a really charged action. So, you know, like, I never set out to do it as a stance against society in a way. I always did it to be more myself. Um, and so that's like the interesting thing about being a queer person in the online space is that I feel like people put a lot of pressure on others to speak up about issues when sometimes what I want to do is just play with makeup and not make it a big thing. Just choosing to be myself. This blush blends so so nicely, it's like super seamless. When did you feel like you loved yourself enough to let other people into your love life? Growing up, I derived a lot of self-worth from being well-liked. Personally, um, I got into a lot of relationships, like three of them, without dating. So I got into those relationships when somebody expressed interest in me. So I never really went on dates. And so feeling very unloved as a child, not from my parents, but in terms of society, because I just think society didn't know how to love a feminine boy. So I felt very unworthy and unloved and just ugly, I guess. And so when the first person showed interest in me, I was like immediately attached. Like I got attached really, really quickly. For about seven to eight years of my life, I was just in relationships um, because somebody wanted to date me. I gave up a lot of my own creative freedom, I gave up a lot of my autonomy, and my self-worth was derived from being with a relationship. And I got into very, um, a couple of very codependent relationships, you know? And so I'm slowly learning to like stand on my own and be with people that are themselves first and let me be myself. It's important to really love yourself first and know yourself and be with yourself before going into relationships and taking time to really understand yourself. Like this past year, I've been living alone and just kind of learning to be alone. I've learned to do that in quarantine and I've learned to be, to stand up for myself when I feel like somebody's crossing the line or not respecting my boundaries. There's a lot of internalized feminine hate, in, in, especially in the gay dating world, you know, I'm sure you guys have heard of like mask for mask and no femmes and no Asians and no fats. Like there's a lot of layers in gay dating. People can only meet you where they've met themselves and this quote I, I think re resonates true in terms of the gay dating world. People project their insecurities about being feminine or their bodies. Like people project all those things if they haven't worked on it themselves. I learned that I have to love myself very deeply and be very confident of what I have to offer as a human being first and foremost compared to being a lover. Everybody projects, there's, there's no perfect relationship but it's easier to deal with that when you are more sure of yourself and you can stand up for yourself. Are you LGBTQ? If yes, how was telling your parents? I got a lot of coming out questions and I just wanted to say that actually coming out to my parents is not not like that bad. You know, I wasn't kicked out. I wasn't really shamed or anything like that. I mean, yes, it, it took them a little bit to understand because of how society is structured. 
I think most people expect their kids to turn out um, like straight. And that's something I think is changing slowly uh, with the younger generation and the new generation of parents, uh, which is really good. I'm happy for that. I think parents will, parents know ultimately, like they love you so much. They see your every move. I think a lot of them know deep down if you are queer or gay or lesbian. I think it's just an adjustment period for a lot of them. And if they don't understand that, then you have to work on yourself and find happiness within yourself and hopefully in the future they'll come around because your happiness and your mental health is the most important thing in the world and I stress that so much because you can have money you can have nice cars fancy things you can have success in your career and your relationships but if your mental health is not great all of that does not matter because all all of that is just external things because of generational differences, they might not understand at first. But you know, send them links, send them videos, uh, maybe in their native language. And I know for my parents, um, I actually have a friend, like a childhood friend that was that came out as queer as well. So that kind of helped, like my aunties talking to my parents. You know, like it kind of helps that they have like a community to talk to and to help them realize that it is normal, like this is fine, it's not the end of the world and your kids can still be successful and still be happy being queer. I got a lot of questions about coming out. Essentially, I think safety is the most important thing when you're coming out. Sometimes it's easier to confide in, you know, a friend's parents. You, you just know some aunties and uncles um, that will just support you and I think sometimes it's easier to go that route before telling your own parents or your own siblings. Gauge, gauge your friends and see how they kind of react slowly before full out, you know, coming out. Because I think like safety is the most important thing. Make sure you are in a safe environment. Make sure you have a safe place to go to before coming out fully. Make sure you have a number to call. Make sure you know somebody that will kind of take you in before telling your parents because you never really know what will happen. Um, or find a community online if you can. It gets better. They have a lot of resources, which I'll link down below as well, that you can talk to. I always felt like like I was the only one going through this when I was younger. Like, oh my gosh, like no one can possibly understand. But there are people, and now with social media and the internet, I think um, it's much, much easier to find help and support. All right, so lips, this question. From Elf, what is something that someone told you that makes a huge impact on you and your journey to be who you are? I'm very appreciative of every single person that kind of supported me and has helped me be the person who I am today. But um, I did a kind of like an interview video with JBN from Queer Eye, and I kind of told him that, you know, as a queer Asian non binary person, I didn't really know where I'm going. I really don't know how my life looks like. Um, I don't really relate to a lot of these um, lifestyle bloggers and vloggers because I just don't see myself in like a white picket fence house with beautiful kids and a beautiful home, beautiful husband, beautiful wife. And JVN told me that, you know, sometimes if you don't see the path that you're going, then you have to create your own path. And it's difficult because there's no blueprint to follow, but that's what kind of like makes life fun as well. And it's not gonna be easy, but it's very liberating. And I gain a lot of strength um, from thinking that, oh wow, I get to make my own path. Ooh, this is dark, okay. But you know what, let's go for it. If you're a cis straight person, um, you might feel like it doesn't really relate to your life. But I think everything relates to everything because we are in... The world is like an ecosystem, right? And everything affects each other. And so these gender and societal expectations that we have on queer people, on men and women, they're all related because even as you know, cis men and cis women, it's very restricting if you feel like you can only wear these things. You can only act a certain way. You have to shave this, shave that. You have to wear this, wear that. You have to 
speak like this, speak like that, and I think it definitely affects women more than men, but I think the world could use a little a bit more fluidity. Face. If you could face your younger self today, what would you tell them? I'd probably tell them to slow down and have less pressure on myself. Because growing up, I felt like I had such a perfectionist mindset, and I still do. I mean, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna, not gonna sit here and lie and say that I don't, in my head, want everything to be perfect. But yeah, I would tell myself to like slow down and really appreciate this blossoming Ivan and that it's okay to be who he is. Um, I've always been um, a very gentle person and I've always worn my heart on my sleeve. I've always said how I felt, like cried when I wanted to, um, shared when I needed to, told people I appreciate them when I do. Um, but when I was younger, I always felt like I had to hide it because the idea of being a man was such so ingrained in me to hide all my emotions, to only love sports, cars, get rid of all the feminine and creative stuff. So I would tell myself that it's okay to just love what you love. And that's it. Like, it's as simple as that, you know? And I would tell all of you to do that as well and really follow what makes you light up because I think as you get older, we get more and more societal pressures and more and more ideas in our head on how to act, how to be like, what you should have by a certain age that it sucks the joy out of a lot of things in life. If you want a new haircut, go for it. If you want to dress a certain way, go for it. You want to put your makeup a certain way, go for it. Because why not? Sub, dom, or switch. I like it. I, you know I don't like labels, so. Have you ever felt pressure to do or behave a certain way regarding how you identify as? Especially when I was coming out as non-binary last year, I felt like I have to have a mullet for some reason. Like, I feel like all non-binary people and androgynous people have mullets. So that, that was like, <laughs> A thought that was in my head, I was like, I should have a mullet before I come out as non-binary. But now, a year in, I feel like the pressure has definitely gone, and I feel like I can be whoever I want to be and still identify as non-binary without having to like prove myself. Society has a way of like making you feel like an imposter or that you're not enough or you're lying about your feelings i can confidently say today that i feel non-binary even if i don't have a mullet if i have short hair i pre present masculine I present really feminine like really your your gender identity is for you only these days i feel like the idea that you have of me in your head is not related to me at all. So you can call me anything, you can think of me of anything, it doesn't change who I am and my identity inside. So for lips, I'm gonna go in with this Jelly Pop Blush Lip Mask. It's really, really nice. Elfest with Jen Atkins. It's a perfect rose color. When I speak about makeup and clothing, I know that you know, even though these things are genderless, practically, like in real life, yes, that might be, there might be like safety concerns and real life consequences with your family or just going out in public. Try it slowly. I think for me, it was like starting with concealer. This makeup style is like very trendy on like, like more like TikTok and stuff. That's what I try to do with my videos and my channel. Like, I'm not a perfect, I'm not a perfect person at all. I don't know anything about, you know, like, I'm not really well versed in everything with gender and sexuality because I think being open to all of those things are, is what's gonna make you a better person in general anyways. So I'm gonna use this mascara. This is the Lash It Loud Volumizing Mascara. It's really, really, really fat. And um, I only put it on the bottom lash line because I have um, inverted, I guess, what it lids, you call it. So it always gets on my lashes. 
So I'm just gonna. Cute. Time to draw like little hearts. Okay, I'm gonna use this setting spray and spray on this brush. Nobody can tell you how to live your life but yourself. So don't feel like you have to put so much pressure on like coming out and you know, it's fine. It's fine to live um, your life closeted, comfortable and safe. That's totally valid too. You don't really need to come out if you don't feel like you. Also like something that was really important to me is Brene Brown's books. Um, I forgot which book it was, but it was about true belonging and I think you'll find your tribe when you are truly yourself. Like you listen to your intuitions, you listen to what guides you and you don't mold yourself to be this version for your friends or your family because that's not true belonging. Like you, you won't truly feel comfortable because you feel like you're hiding something. So true belonging is the spiritual practice of believing in and belonging to yourself so deeply that you can share your most authentic self with the world and find sacredness in both being a part of something and standing alone in the wilderness. True belonging doesn't require you to change who you are, it requires you to be who you are. This is by Brene Brown and it really struck a chord with me and I hope it helps you in finding your belonging in the world. So I hope you found this video helpful and I hope that by me living my fullest, most expressive life, it can somehow, I guess, show you and also inspire you to do so with your own life. You don't need permission from anyone and you don't need validation for anyone else. You certainly don't need it from me. I'm just here to support you as you're discovering this for yourself. And you know this journey, we're all on, in it together. If you feel like wearing binders, go for it. If you feel like wearing a dress, do it. If you feel like wearing makeup, go for it. If everyone in the world judges you for that, just know that me, from this little corner of the internet, I won't. Wanna wear cat ears? Put on freaking cat ears. Who cares? They're cute. Look at me, cute. I love it. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have more questions down below, ask away. And I also want to say a huge shout out to Elf Cosmetics for sponsoring this video. I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye!